Hi, I'm Evan Pickworth from Business Day and the Financial Mail. We're joined by Gillian Lowndes from Lowndes Dlamini, and she's one of the top divorce lawyers in the country. It's a different topic for us. We don't often look at divorce, but we wanted to delve into the business of divorce with Gillian. But Gillian, to start off with, um, divorce rates. Yes. They on the rise, are they? They've always been fairly high. Um, there was a slight dip a couple mm. of years ago when the recession hit because people actually couldn't afford to get divorced. But now we're back to more than 50% of marriages failing. And your statistics are second marriages have a, f a higher failure rate than first. And um, that's because of merged families, ex-spouses, and the difficulties that go along with that. It's not a simple relationship that you enter into second time round. Now, when it comes to pension funds, that's been one of the difficult hurdles and we had some changes in 2007. How's that been going? A little bit more equitable? Far more equitable. Okay. Previously, pension fund benefits were not included as an asset when people were getting divorced, and mm. now they are. And there was another exciting amendment to the Pension Funds Act in terms whereof a spouse now doesn't have to wait to get paid mm. out as and when the member retires. They can now be paid out immediately. Um, they can then choose what they want to do with those funds, and of course there are um, tax consequences. The non-member who gets the benefit has to pay the tax on that entitlement. So it is very important when you are in a negotiated settlement to make sure that the expectation is set at a certain figure, that they realize that their slice of the pie will be slightly curtailed by the tax implications. But a much fairer dispensation, yes. Absolutely. Um, the customary marriage system, yes. um, we've had some recent precedents there, some, some interesting cases that have, that have made that a lot more of an accessible system as well very accessible. Mm. You know, even the difficulty that you have with customary law is that it's a very dynamic law and it's very hard to pinpoint exactly what those customary laws are. No. But the recognition of Customary Marriages Act now regulates all monogamous marriages either prior to the act, the commencement of the act or after. Polygynous marriages where there's more than one wife are still regulated prior to the commencement of the act by customary law. But going forward, all other monogamous um, customary marriages are regulated by the Act and as such in community of property unless there's an ANC. Now the exciting part of that Act for me, um, particularly being a woman and you know, you've got your lovely gender and constitutional issues, is Section 84A, if we're going to get technical, of the Act states that um, in a divorce situation, those marriages will be dealt with in an equitable way. So in terms of Section 7.3 of our, our Divorce Act, that will be applicable to all customary marriages on dissolution and a judge will be able to step into the arena and make what he considers to be, he or she, a just and equitable award. Now, if you're married in terms of the Marriage Act and you're married um, in a, a civil marriage, you don't have access to that section unless you were married before 1984 out of community of property. Now I'd like to see that extended to all civil marriages and not only customary marriages but I think it's lovely for people in customary marriages that they do have access to that equi equitable distribution system. Now are we making it easier for this, this um, the families that are in the midst of this very difficult period? Are the court systems uh, and family offices making life easier or does more need to happen? You know, even we're in such a state of flux at the moment, um, the court systems are generally tending to move towards a mediation um, environment. I'm not sure that that necessarily works though. We are trying it out. We are seeing if it works. Most divorce practitioners are um, obtaining mediation um, qualifications and they, you know, they're, they're moving in that direction. There was a commission many years ago, um, the Hookster Commission, in terms of they were wanting to set up a, sp a specific family court system which was separate to the main court system a more comfortable environment, um, lovely big reception areas yes. where children and mothers and fathers could sit and um, they could have access to mediators, uh, financial um, advisors, but we haven't reached there yet. I think it's a budgetary constraint. We do need to get there. <laughs>